if you think yeah. people are going to employ you just because you've got gear, yeah. you're going to maybe get a few jobs, but then never employ you again. So, you know, I, I still think the most important thing is to, is to learn and get experience. You know, a lot, of, a lot of these videos I'm seeing, you know, that are done by people who haven't been through training or I don't know how to say this nicely, but the screen direction is an important thing. It's like they're just kerplunk. They're placed in there. Top there center, right? Yeah, yeah right there, in the isn't, there isn't a sort of rule of thirds or any kind of composition, just, yeah, composition camera movement. Right. You know, that, that's what makes Lawrence of Arabia amazing. Mm -hmm. How the shots add up to each other. I mean, David Lean built a lens just to, to capture the sort of depth of field that he wanted to get. And he was an editor. You know, that was where yeah, it started. Exactly. He, he edited films first. I mean, he, he really knew how to piece the puzzles together. When Steve and I were walking over here, yeah. we talked about putting all the pieces together, like how we like the puzzle making piece. And if you're an editor, you know, clearly you know how to do that. You know? I think even now with the technology being available to everybody, you can, you know, any individual can finish a film from start to finish in post that um, I think you'll see a, a general trend of of younger filmmakers that go into shooting something thinking like an editor or thinking, you know, having a, a general knowledge of the whole picture. Well, you have to as a director. I mean, that's your job, you know. <laughs> so many young people, though, don't see it like that. They, they just see, you know, hey, I want to be a director without really knowing what the director does. I, I have a student who actually made his first film as one of the best films of that bunch. And he immediately said to me afterwards, I don't ever want to direct again. Too hard, much too hard. I want to shoot. But, I, but and he just doesn't, he didn't know what the director's job was. He happened to make a nice film because of it. But, you know, he said, no, no thanks. Yeah, no, that's not for everybody. I mean, you really need to figure out what position is right, right. for you. Yeah. I like your idea, what you were saying before, actually, where really I was an editor, too, before I started to direct. I think it's almost impossible to become a director and not know how the story's put together right. in post. Right. Right. How um, scenes go together, how do you, the placement of shots off of each other. Right. And you need to have a good knowledge of everything that everybody does. I worked with a director, a first time director, and he really didn't have a clue about anything. He would just use this terminology and say, well, can you explain to me what you're trying to do with the shot? What, what do you want from me? And he couldn't. And I was trying to suggest things to him. He said, well, you can do that. I didn't know you could do that. Mm -hmm. Just really basic stuff. And he just, I mean, he's straight out of film school. Um, calls himself a director, sells himself as a director, but really has no experience and no real knowledge of anything. And, and, you, and you, you've really got to have a good grounding and know what, how everybody does their thing and what, pe what you can do and what you can't do. The people that say, you always hear this, you know, where they don't want to get pigeonholed, like, I don't want to be typecast for a certain style. I'm like, what are you, nuts? Mm -hmm. You want to be typecast as a certain style. When uh, Stunzi came here, he's like, oh, let's make a video kind of a la Bloom-like. I'm like, well, let's not do that. Let's let Bloom do that. We'll make one a la Weiss or Stunzi-like. Right, right. You know, I said, find our style and you stick with it. That's, mm -hmm. that's what makes you unique and marketable. I agree. I mean, I, I think, you know, I used to direct lots and lots of TV commercials, and a difficulty I had was I was a generalist. I told stories, which was great. I mean, I, I liked doing it, but if they wanted comedy, if they wanted kids, if they, and I had a little bit of each of those things, but I was all over the map. There were times I just had reels which were just kids. And you know, I, I didn't do with kids as well as the best kids guy in town did. You say kids, I see yeah. a Bob Evil. Right, of course, so, exactly. So, <laughs> that's know, why, like, so that's why I put it next to product and next to a car and next to that. Or if you say car, you right. go to California or you know, Arizona or somewhere. You exactly. Go. Yeah, it's exactly. real tough, but you have to have your own style and stick to it. A lot of people will think you know, a film has to be a narrative story. Mm -hmm and they, it has to have a script and it has to have words and a beginning, middle, and end. And there's so many different, so much more to film and that can be so much more. People, they're just very narrow-minded about what it is and they, they look at something and say, well, that's not a film. I mean, look at something like um, Baraka, uh, Ron Frick's beautiful um, globe-trotting around the world of some of the most beautiful shots you'll ever see. An absolutely mesmerizing film. You know, not a single line of dialogue in it at all. Yeah. That's how it should be. Yeah, I, I like reading scripts with the least amount of dialogue as possible, unless it's maybe David Mamet or somebody like that. Yeah. But I mean, especially on the student level and a short film level, yeah. if you can make it as, with few, the least amount of dialogue, fewest yeah. words, just pictures. To, I mean, the sound business killed the film business in many ways. Well, that, then, then, then that's your, that's your thing. Yeah. I actually like a talky-talky picture, you know, yeah. David Mamet. I mean, yeah. I like good talky-talky, yeah. but I mean, how many David Mamets are there? Yeah, exactly. There's a few people that have sort of, when you think of like, you know, who's really making something interesting, you know, and different, I think of Boogie Nights. Mm -hmm. 
Paul that's Thomas a, Anderson. Yeah. yeah. Very definitive style, um, nonlinear. Uh, uh, when I saw JFK, oh, that's another kind of, but that's to me sort of a, you know that that director is an editor because you can just see the way it's all just completely pieced. You have all these multi stories running at the same time and then they merge mm -hmm. towards the end. I mean, when the first time I saw that, I was like, oh my God, that is innovative. And he, I liked what he did too. Oliver Stone did with all the different stocks. I mean, he had Super 8 stuff. Yeah. Robert Richardson, I think Robert Richardson was the DP on that. Yeah. And I mean, I, Mixed I media, th yeah. And, and I think he helped Oliver Stone a lot on that film. I mean, that was cool. I mean, I, you see, you see, I don't really care what. The, I can kind of like, like you know, really that we were talking about skins. That's not a show for 46 year old, mm. but I, I can watch it. Like Joe Swanberg, you know Joe Swanberg's work. He's actually going to be doing a video with us soon. He says, you know, if you're over 40, you're out of my, you know, you can't <laughs> get my mumblecore thing. Mm -hmm. I get it. Mm -hmm. It's he has a style. I don't care mm -hmm. what yeah, it is. Yeah. It's a minimalist thing, but. He gets some some pretty honest performances mm -hmm. because he's not screwing around with all these lights and you know uh, stopping. You know, it's sometimes hard when you're with when you're really doing a very stuttery start and stop process. Right. This is quite easy for us because right. you know we're rolling five five cameras at once. So it's mm -hmm. like you can act, we couldn't act this out. What's so interesting? Those directors who are just known as actors, directors. I mean, they don't yeah. really know the technology. They just know how to work with actors. Yeah. I mean, how do you as a DP, how do you work with those type directors who, are you happy? Do they say, you know, run with it. You, you tell me how, how I'm going to light it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, that's what I, they would want me to do. They would want me to, to bring a, a look and a vision to that, um, which is great. Um, but I do prefer a collaborative process. I want to um, be working with the director very, very closely. And so we're both on the same level. I don't want, you know, my vision, to, to, for me to tell him my vision, then he says, yeah, great. Yeah. I want him to kind of, <laughs> I, I, wanna, I want a bit of back and forth. Like, I, Okay, any director that says, okay, great, we got a problem here. Absolutely. This yeah. ain't going to be a beautiful especially movie. For me, especially for me, yeah. He's like, <laughs> dude, do you hear what I said? It's usually a fight from day one to Absolutely. the end. That's when you know you got, Jens and I have been working together for 27 years, and we fight every fucking time, and there is some <laughs> stomping out of the room, and that's when you know you're making, yeah. you're, you're challenging each other. Absolutely. You're bringing it to the point where you need to bring it, be otherwise you're soft pedaling it. Well, and just caring. I mean, caring enough to have the argument is really important. If not, right. you go, ah, it's just four guys at a table talking. I did a, um, a corporate uh, film mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago. Big sort of, for big DVD, for big American company. Lots of actors um, shooting it on the letter scan. Really, um, really high production value, but very novice director. Quite an old guy, very, very old school. And um, we had some very fiery discussions about stuff. And you know, at the end of the day, I just said to him, look, you've hired me as DP. Now, you've got to trust me at some point, because if you're going to argue with everything that I want to do, then you may as well just shoot it yourself. Mm -hmm. And I'm only doing this because I, I care and I want it to look as good as possible. And I guarantee you, you do it the way you want to do it now, you're going to get to that edit suite and you're going to just shake your head. Mm -hmm. you, you've, got to have, you've got to trust the people you work with and you've got to work with them. And I think that's really, really important. And yeah. And uh, I did, you know, I stormed off at one point during that. Wow. <laughs> I stormed off and said, you know, if we're going to carry on like this, I'm just going to walk because wow. honestly, it's, it's just not worth it because, you know, you, you're not trusting me at all. I, I rely on my DP. I don't know about other directors, but I, I'm not one that can step in and run my own camera. Yeah. Uh, I need to know that that person th is thinking like I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. And it got to the point where, because we did lo mostly a lot of interviewing and stuff, and we only had one, we would do mostly one camera. And I, I would know that if... I, I could just kind of like have these little signals like this and Jens would be zooming in and kind of, right, he'll know to zoom in exactly when I'm going to finish talking because he knows how long I yap. That, that, I mean, I, I usually work with the same DP mm -hmm. as well, but every now and then you get those opportunities where you either have to go use someone else or, or you're, you know, they pick you for some reason. I like going both ways. I like my regular DP. I yeah. mean, just, I like that. But I love the challenge of, hey, we've got to meet and figure out what we're going to do and yeah. come to a common language. That's a really good muscle to exercise. It. That's the kind of relationship you need with the, with the DP. I mean, if you don't have that, man, something is, that is critical. Sound, picture, and direction. You know, other things can fall, but that can't fall.